Hello everyone, this is Abhinash and welcome to Immortal Universe. In this lecture, we'll see about the principles of the X-ray productions in Hort Cathode Ray Tube. Now let's get started. Before going to the principles of the X-ray productions, let me say the components which is present inside the tube now. Okay, so here I have a cathode which is made up of tungsten and here I have an anode. It is also made up of tungsten. So I'll explain why tungsten is used in hot cathode ray tube in the middle of the video. Okay, and this tube is made up of pyrex glass because pyrex glass can withstand high temperature without breaking down. Okay, and this tube will box only if the vacuum is maintained inside the tube that is high vacuum okay the reason for vacuum is for example if the tube works on the open uh, atmosphere the oxygen present inside the atmosphere may react with the hot filament and burns out the filament or oxidize the filament okay due to this reason this tube is maintained at high vacuum okay and that's it about this tube and now we will see what is electron emission now normally in all metals we have free electrons free electrons in the sense these electrons does not bound with any atoms of the orbit it is free to move inside the metal okay this is called free electrons i think now you have uh, got a clear idea about free electrons right so now we'll see how these electrons are emitted from the surface by giving an external energy to the free electrons, free electrons gains energy so that it moves out from the surface of the metal. So this is called electron emission. You may got a doubt now. These electrons are free to move inside the metal. But why it need another extra energy to move out from the surface? Why it cannot uh, move out from the surface without giving external energy? There is a reason for that. That is when this free electrons move to the surface boundary of the metal it cannot jump out from the metal because behind this free electrons there are thousands of positive nucleus right that is called protons these protons attract the free electrons from all the sides for this reason these free electrons cannot go out of the surface due to this attractive force that is called potential barrier of this nucleus so this potential barrier is called as surface barrier. So to break this surface barrier, we are giving external energy to the free electrons to move out from the surface. Okay, this is the reason. This is called work function. That is by giving a minimum energy to the electron and moving out the electron from the surface is called work function. Okay, each and every metal have a different work function. Okay, so the least work function metal is cesium because it have 1.95 electron volts when you give 1.95 electron volts to the metal the free electron is going to come out from the surface and the high work function metal is platinum that is 5.12 to 5.93 electron volts so due to this high work function we have to give high energy to eject the or to remove the electron from the surface okay in tungsten we have work function of 4.30 to 5.22 electron volt now we have seen the principles of the electron emission okay this electron emission can be done in three ways number one is thermionic emission number two is field emission and number three is photo emission okay in our x-ray tubes that is hot cathode ray tube we are using thermionic emission principles in the cathode thermionic emission was first observed by a scientist called thomas alva edison and he invented the first incandescence bulb on 1879 okay and because of his invention our world became bright even in the night now we'll see the thermionic emission principle now thermal ion that is by giving thermal energy to the metal we can eject or we can remove the ions that is called electrons from the metal surface this is called thermionic emission okay now when we give a tube current that is ma to the cathode the cathode filament get heated to the high temperature so that thermionic temperature is 2327 degree celsius 
So to withstand this high temperature, we are using tungsten because tungsten have a high atomic number that is 74 and it has a high melting point that is 3422 degrees Celsius. Okay. So that the free electron which is present inside the metal gains kinetic energy and comes out from the metal surface. Okay. And if you increase the tube current, the metal gets more heat and due to that heat, the outermost electron also come out from the surface. Okay. But we have a problem here that is when you increase the tube current that is MA, space short effect is happens there. That is the electron forms as a cloud near the filament so that the electron which is arriving behind it gets rippled again into the metal. Due to this cloud formation, the electron cannot move from the surface. It is clouded around the filament. Okay. So to overcome this problem, what we have to do is we have to increase the tube potential that is KVP. If we increase the tube potential, the electrons gain sufficient energy so that it moves in a high velocity. And at last you have to keep it in mind that is whenever you increase the KVP, the energy of the electron is going to be high. Only KVP can increase the energy that is the velocity of the electron. Okay. Even by increasing KVP, we can increase the intensity also. Okay, not that much than the tube current. Some amount of electrons are cleared. Tube current cannot increase the energy. It can increase the intensity of that is amount of electron productions in the hot cathode. Okay, but the tube current and the KVP applied at the same time. Okay, for your understanding, I just separated the concept and say part by part. And this is what I'm trying to mean. That is, the MA is always influenced by the kilo voltage peak. And this is what going on inside the heart cathode to produce high velocity electrons. And this thermionic emission principle is used in Coolidge tube, stationary anode X-ray tube and the modern X-ray tube called rotating anode X-ray tube. This X-ray tube works under this thermionic emission principle. And now let's see what happens when this high velocity electron goes and eat the anode now. Now when this high velocity electron goes and eats the electron which is present inside the anode, it ionizes the electron and due to the law of conservation of energy, the energy transformed into enormous amount of heat and 1% of X radiations. Okay. And the reason for using the tungsten in anode is because due to high atomic number, it can produce efficient X rays and due to the high velocity of the electrons, when it eats the anode, enormous amount of heat is produced due to the law of conservation of energy. So to withstand the heat produced in the anode, we are using tungsten okay so this is the reason for using tungsten in the hot cathode ray tube and this is what going on inside the hot cathode ray tube to produce x-rays and of course i want to say something that is important that is the high velocity electron which is interacted with the atom which is just one interaction in the anode but in reality it happens more than five interactions okay so i'll explain these interactions in a separate video with detailed explanation and I'll explain what are all interactions is used in radiology field okay and that's it about this principles of the x-ray productions in hot cathode ray tube and if you have any doubts or feedbacks on this lecture feel free to put comments on my comment box I'll try to make it on my upcoming lectures and if you want to get my upcoming lectures you can subscribe channel and thank you